welcome dear students i am richa shakya assistant professor in noida institute of engineering technology pharmacy institute greater noida today i am here to deliver the lecture on the topic that is subject from uh, b pharma that is subject name human anatomy and physiology 2 and subject code is bp 201t and this course comes under the dr apj abdul kalam technical university so today's topic for the uh, this is a spermatogenesis and oogenesis in the previous lectures we uh, discuss about the uh, what is the structure and the function of the female and the male reproductive systems and what is the physiology of the uh, is, uh, fer fertilization and menstruation and now today here we discuss about or we learn about what is the process of the spermatogenesis and oogenesis now start with the introductory part so basically this oogenesis and spermatogenesis this combination or is a process is known as a gametogenesis so what is a gametogenesis so gametogenesis is a process of gametes formation in a sexually reducing uh, uh, reproduction the new of springs so basically gametogenesis means the gametes genesis means the formation right so there is a formation of gametes it's a male gametes that is a sperms and the female gametes that is a ova or the egg so gametogenesis is the process of gamete formation by the sexually reproduction of the formation of the new offsprings now the sexual reproduction in human contain in a two types of the cell that is such as the somatic cells and the germinal cells and the somatic cells are form the various parts of the organs of the body and they provide the phases for the maturation what is maturation maturation means when the cell is properly developed right so this is the this somatic cells provide the proper phases for the maturation development and formation of the germinal cells the somatic cells are always allow the multiple by mitotic division and this is done by the process of the mitotic division the mitotic division and the meiosis division uh, you learn about you learn in the cell cycles right now the uh, germinal cells so what is the germinal cells the germinal cells are the gonads that is the testes and the ovaries in the human body and these cells produce the gamete cells by the successive mitotic and the meiotic divisions so basically this is the about the gametogenesis so the male gametes the game the male gametes is known as the spermatozoa or the sperms and the female gametes is known as the ovum or the egg when they fuse together they form the zygote so the process of the sperm production is known as spermatogenesis and the process of the ova or the egg production is known as the oogenesis so this is the definition of spermatogenesis and the oogenesis so formation of the sperms is known as the spermatogenesis and the formation of the egg is known as the oogenesis and this comes under the process of the gametogenesis now we discuss about the structure of the sperm basically so the structure of the sperm it's a yolkless and the size of the sperm is smaller than the spermatocytes these are the sperm cells and it contains the less amount of the cytoplasm the sperm is surrounded by only one plasma membrane and it consists of the four parts that is a head neck middle middle piece and the tail so basically the sperm the structure of the sperm is differentiated into the three three uh, sorry four categories head neck middle and the tail right now so this is the structure of the sperm so this is the head part this is a head part this is neck this is the body part or the middle part or this is the tail so basically the sperm is divided into the four sub categories head neck body and the tail and this head is uh, 
covered with the layer that is known as the acrosome and this acrosome is made up of or it is covered with the layer that is known as a plasma membrane and inside this acrosome there is a nucleus. So, nucleus is contained, uh, nucleus is present on the center of the acrosome and there is a centriole after that there is a terminal disc. So, there is a also here this is the mitochondria present here. Why mitochondria present here? Because the uh, production for the energy, for the movement, right. So, basically mitochondria is also provide the energy and this is the terminal sac after the uh, after the formation of the zyg uh, zygote when the sperm is fused with the egg. So, basically this only there is a terminal disc. So, from the here it is uh, disconnected and this is the axil, uh, axial filament. So, this is a Peripheral, peripheral means it is the outer layer, it is the peripheral of the acrosome spaces. This is the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. This yellow part, this is the acrosome, this is the nuclear vacuoles, and this is the nucleus, right. So, here this is the connecting pieces and side by side there is a mitochondria present for the more for the energy sources. Now, this is the front view of the structure of the sperms and this is the side view of the structure of the sperms where it is just like this and there is a some acromia, uh, sorry, uh, there is some acrosomal spaces. This is a equational segments and this is a central part where the division occurs and this is a radiant nuclear envelope. So, this is the basic structure of the sperm. Now, in the deep if we study about in the detail. So, we study about the head. So, head is consists of the acrosome and the nucleus and this acrosome present on the tip and it formed by the Golgi bodies. Right. So, the, in the cell structure you study about the Golgi apparatus. So, the head part is made up of the Golgi body and it contain the enzyme that is known as the sperm lysine. Okay. There is a some enzyme which is present in the acrosome or it in, in the head of the sperm that is known as the sperm lysines. Right. It is for the digestion of the membrane of the ovum and it is a non condensed nucleus is present which have a no nucleoplasm. What is nucleoplasm? Nucleoplasm is the fluid which is present into the nucleus. So, basically in this part only nucleus is present, but there is no nucleoplasm present into the head part, right. Now, next one is the neck. So, neck it consists of the proximal and the distal uh, centrioles, a proximal centriole is required for the first cleavage and this distal maintain the axial filament of the tail. Now, next one is the middle piece or it is we call the body of the sperm. So, it is a middle piece, it possesses the axial filaments and mitochondria for the movement of the sperms towards the axils. And the filament consists of the compatibility arranged the mitochondria which are approximately 25 in number and provide the energy to the flagell filaments. Now, last one is the tail part, tail part of the sperm. So, it elongate motile and the encircled by the flagell sheath. So, this is the description about the structure of the sperm. Now, we discuss about what is spermatogenesis? What is the process of the spermatogenesis? So, the process of the production of sperms is known as the spermatogenesis which occurs in the male gonads or in the male testis. So, the testis of the vertebrate are composed of many saminiferous tubules which are lined by the cell of the germinal 
epithelium. So basically, the uh, seminif in the last lecture we study about uh, what is a when we study about the structure of the uh, male reproductive system and where we discuss about the structure of the seminiferous tubules. So, in that case, it is made up of the germinal epithelium. The cell of the germinal epithelium is formed the sperms by the process of the spermatogenesis. So, now there are some steps which occurs during the process of the spermatogenesis. So, spermatogenesis is a continuous process and it has a four stages that is a multiplication stage or a mitotic stage, then growth stage, then maturation meiosis stage, last one is a differentiation stage. So, there are the four stages for the formation of the sperms and this process is known as a spermatogenesis. So, we discuss one by the one. Now, first is the maturation phase. So, in the maturation phase, the formation of the spermatogonia. What is spermatogonia? Spermatogonia basically the sperm cells which is initially it is the number in 2n, right. So, after when the spermatogonia is formed, so with the help of the this mitotic division. Always remember that in the spermatogenesis, the first division is done by the mitotic division and when the mitotic division takes place and it is completed its cycle, so it forms the primary spermatocytes and when the primary spermatocytes are formed, they goes to the another division that is known as the meiosis, right. So, that is a meiosis and when the meiosis 1 division occurs, so after this it forms the 2n that is it is again divided, it is a n plus n. So, it is secondary oocytes, it is a 2 and with the help of meiosis 2, it forms again their two daughter cells with a single end. So, it forms at the end there is a four number of spermatids, right. So, this process is known as the spermatogenesis. Basically, this is the diagram. Uh, of the flow chart of the spermatogenesis in the first phase there is a multiplication phase then growth phase at the growth phase at what happened at the growth phase growth phase means when the spermatogonia or the sperm cells are developed they try to nurture right because of the growth stage they are the after the maturation is there is a growth stage after that it will mature for the further division right so, in the multiplication phase, there are the undifferentiated cells. So, there is the undifferentiated germ cells or primordial cells contain the large and chromatin rich nuclei for the cell multiply and it is multiplicated by the mitotic division and it produces the cells which is known as the spermatogonia and it is 2n chromosome each. So, all the spermatogonia produced do not participate in the spermatogenesis process which ensure that the stem cells nerve run out of the supply. So, when the cells are formed, so not each sperm cells are going for the further process of the spermatogenesis, it is only few. Now, after the multiplication phase, there is a growth phase. So, the two produced daughter cells are initially chromosomes with the just one chromatid. These cells are entered into the period of the growth, cell, uh, growth phase, which is known as the interphase, which allow the cells to replenish their chromosomal material. So, in the, grow, uh, in the growing phase, they are try to develop properly 
for the further maturation process and the end result of the two cells which is double chromatid chromosomes these are known as the primary spermatocytes. Now next one is the maturation. So, maturation is the primary spermatocytes that enter into the meiosis division which is double division right double division means there is a two phases meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. So, it is done by the two steps. So, that is a double division. So, in the first division that is a meiosis 1 it is called as a reductional division. So, in the reductional division it produce two daughter cells each with chromosomal this is a just half in number that is which is a 2n. This daughter cells are called as the secondary spermatocytes and it is worth nothing that acrosome of these called these cells called have a two chromatids right in the secondary means in the second division or the sec, uh, or the meiosis 2 division it is called as a equational. So, meiosis 1 is the reductional and meiosis 2 is the equational division and it is nearly to the identical meiosis, uh, mitosis. However, it is very important that there is a no need of period of intermission means there is a no need of any interfaces right. So, it is between the meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So, the, the previously obtained daughter cells each produce the two new daughter cells which bring the total number of the cells of 4. So, at the end it forms the number of cells is a 4. So, the newly formed daughter cells have a n chromosomes but with one chromatid. Okay, there is a formation of the n chromosomes, but there is a one chromatid, and they are known as the spermatids. All our progeny cells remains attached to each other by the cytoplasmic bridge. The bridge remain until sperms are fully differentiated. In the initial phase, it is undifferentiated. But when they, they pass on the growth phase, they pass on the maturation phase, now they are differentiated. So, differentiation is essential for the process of transforming the spermatids into the mature sperms and it is important to all the motility. Once all the previous divisions are done, the spermatids are formed and these and from the where the differentiation of the spermatids are start right. So, uh, differentiation is also known as the spermatogenesis and this term is not confused with the term of the spermatogenesis and this term is known as a spermogenesis. So, differentiation process of the spermatid cells is known as a spermogenesis. So, it is just like the process of the differentiation of the spermatids. Now, during the differentiation, the spermatids is gradually molded into an elongated shape and large portion of the cytoplasma are shed off. Okay. The sperm develop an acrosome produced by the Golgi apparatus and flagella that looks roughly like the long tail and it is responsible for the motility. The flagella is produced by the central present in the spermatids. The nucleus is the nucleus is sequenced and elongated the shape of the form of acrosome of the head of the sperm. Right? The acrosome occupy in the topmost part of the head. The mito the mitochondria which act as a powerhouse cell. We, they are arranged in the middle piece or the body part of the uh, sperms to, uh, to uh, middle part of the sperms along with the centrioles. So, with the help of these mitochondria, there is a powerhouse. So, it provides the energy 
for the movement. Now, once the differentiation is completed, the sperm cells separated and migrate into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. So, after the completion of the differentiation process, that is spermiogenesis process, all the sperms goes to the seminiferous tubules. So, this is all about the spermatogenesis. So, after the they goes to the seminiferous tubules, so, so they are ready for the zygo, uh, ready for the maturation process uh, right now next one the oogenesis what is oogenesis 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 basically it is the formation of the egg cells right it is occurs in the female and this oogenesis process start before the birth of the child right it is just start before the birth of the child so, oogenesis it is occur in the female reproductive system and it again consists of the growth phase which is primary egg cell becomes a mature ovum or the egg. The egg cell remain as a primary ovum until the time of the release of the egg arrive ovary arrives. Now, the egg cells then undergoes for the further cell divisions the oogenesis complete in the three successive stages that is a multiplication, growth phase and maturation phase right. So, this phase, this initial phase is done before the birth. Always remember that oogenesis process start before the birth right when the baby uh, uh, when the fetus inside the womb. So, at that condition the oogenesis process is start and the spermatogenesis start after the birth right. So, oogenesis, so this is the process before the birth. So, there is the cell, there is an egg that is known as the oogonium, uh, it is diploid in number, there is a 2n and it occurs for the meos, uh, mitotic division and it forms the primary oocytes right. So, when the egg cell uh, when the egg cell produce and it is uh, start the division the mitotic division so after the mitotic division it forms again the diploid cells that is 2n right so it is again form the 2n and this primary oocytes arrest means this it, this process stop at the phase 1 right it is arrested on the phase 1 and this process is stopped right now. Now, after the birth or when after the from the puberty, right, it again start this pro phase which is arrested. Now, it is released and it is released the primary oocytes which is deployed in number, they goes to the meiosis 1 division. After the meiosis 1, they forms the polar bodies. Polar bodies are no are not for the uh, preparation of the oogenesis. So these polar bodies are not in use. They form the secondary oocytes, and this secondary oocytes again form the next secondary oocytes, and which is again ar arrested, which is again arrested at the metaphase two. Right, it is again it is arrested in the metaphase 2 until and unless there is a process of the evolution. Right, so this is the process of the spermatogenesis side by side, there is a follicular development. So, it's follicular development, it is a primordial follicular, it developed and this forms the primary follicles. This outer layer is known as the thecal cells. This thecal cells is hard and hard and inside this there is a primary oocytes, right. There is a cell, there is a primary oocytes. Again, there is a thecal cells, there is a, there is a oocy uh, oocytes and when the process of evolution occurs, the mature cells will release or mature egg cell will release after evolution if they fused with the egg they forms the zygote. So, this is a process of the oogenesis. 
so in the multiplication stage the oogenesis cells germinal epithelium it becomes the large sized and it multiply with the mitotically and form the population of the egg the mother cells or oogonia and when uh, mitosis stop the oogonia is called as a oocytes and this oocytes in enters into the prophase 1 and it is arrested and before the completion of the first meiosis primary oocyte they pass to the phase of growth and differentiation now growth stage or the growth phase so in the growth phase the size of the primary oocytes increase and this primary oocytes large number of fats and proteins becomes the accumulated in the form of egg due to the heavy weight it is usually concentrated towards the lower portion of the egg forming the vestigial poles and during this growth phase there is a tremendous changes occurs and after the process of the growth phase there is a process of the maturation so after the maturation the process of maturation occur it is occur into the two stages as a first maturation division the second maturation division in previously in previous uh, slide i will show i was show that the process the flow chart that how the process of the first meiosis division is occurs this is a second meiotic division where the haploid secondary oocytes are formed they again they form their uh, new haploid cells and when they fuse with the sperm they form the zygote so this is all about the process of the spermatogenesis and the oogenesis uh, thank you